Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Uh, fantastic as well. I'm excited. We've got a fun guest coming up later on the program. Going to be visiting with Kelly Edwards. She's like a, a designer, and she's got a TV program she does like design stuff with. Going to be talking about do-it-yourself bathroom projects. All righty. So if you've got a bathroom that needs to be tackled, maybe listen later on the program and see if we can hopefully help you out. British scientists are trying to fight global warming by inventing new feed for livestock to reduce methane gas. So it's like gas X for cows. Really? <laughs> Never really thought about it, but if it works, it works, right? It might make put smart, a dent in it. Sm- smell better too. Yeah, that drive by. A, yeah. What is that delicious smell? Oh, hey, there must be livestock smell of ahead. Money. <laughs> hey, a study by the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that diabetes is most likely to be found in fat people. Duh. So, well, I, I'm just saying <laughs> that's I their mean, point. Okay. I knew that. I think a lot of people know that. Yeah. And finally, olive oil was used for washing the body in the ancient Mediterranean world. Did you know that? That's what they used mm. olive oil for back in the day. Now we use it for cooking. cooking. Yeah. Yummy. Mm. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Wednesday, September the 14th, and I'm going to talk really slow because I have just one... Oop, bumping into stuff around here. I have just one thing listed for today, but it's a good thing. National Cream-Filled Donut Day. Oh. oh I love cream-filled I donuts. I do, too. What is your favorite kind of donut? Like, if you could only have one donut, you walk in, you see all the cool stuff that's in a donut shop, and you got to pick just one... Not not a dozen, not half That's a dozen, really hard. not a couple. Which one do you typically lean towards? Probably a cream filled Long John. Uh, what kind of cream and what kind of like what frosting? The white cream with the chocolate frosting. See, no, I go for Bavarian cream with chocolate frosting. If I'm only going to do one, I'd do that. I like jelly filled donuts; those are good. I like jelly filled. I like donuts. the cream filled. I pretty ones much too. just like donuts. <laughs> pretty much the same. Yeah. <laughs> like this could be the problem. <laughs> hey, later in the program, we're going to talk about how laughing can help you lose weight. But I can tell you right now, it doesn't work at all. Eating house. donuts apparently doesn't help. <laughs> all right, we've got some good stuff coming up on a Wednesday edition of the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. This is one of the dumbest things I've read in a long time. And I read some pretty dumb things. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A college in California is now offering a class based on Pokemon Go. What? Fresno City College says that their phys ed course will focus on walking. A flyer that the school posted to Facebook says... This course will use the Pokemon Go app to promote fitness through walking and finding Pokemons on campus, end quote. Are you kidding me? (laughs) So now you're going to pay college tuition to look like an idiot. Hmm. I mean, this is just dumb. If you want to go out and do the Pokemon Go thing, that's awesome. But I can guarantee you, you do not need a college credit doing that because that college credit will not be applicable towards anything. Can you think of a single job no. where having a credit in Pokemon Go is going to help you? No. I can think of a few where if you put that on your resume, it might help you but not get the job. I think of several degrees just like that, though, where, oh. where it's like, what are you going to do with that when you graduate? Well, that's ridiculous. And that is something that you do need to think about. as you, If you've got kids that are you know heading off to school, and I suppose they've already headed back by now, but if you've got kids that are in high school, be sure to talk them out of things like this. This is happening in Fresno City College in California, which is a big shocker. Yeah. Woo, what I a can't shock. imagine that's where they would have done this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, Pokemon Go, and uh, you can get a college credit in that, which will be, uh, you can transfer that to any, any <laughs> school that you want to transfer to that takes worthless college credits, because that is worthless. I mean, there's nothing. Even the creators of Pokemon Go wouldn't hire you if you got that. 
All right. I'll get off of my soapbox now and get back to work. <laughs> All I know is, like I said, this is one of the dumbest stories I've read in a long time. You can get college credit now based on Pokemon Go. Hmm. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. I kind of got a pair of knuckleheads today, one in this story and one for my moment of dub, but they're shockingly similar. Okay. An innocent mistake turned out to be kind of a a really good thing for the folks here in Milford, Massachusetts. The police, through an extensive police sting operation, cops were able to arrest several known drug pushers. Alex Riviera was a man high on their list. And while there was a warrant for his arrest, he was still at large. By mistake, the police released his name to the newspaper as one of those arrested. So they accidentally said, we caught uh, Alex Riviera. Riviera saw the error and was so upset, he went into the police station to complain about the incorrect report that he had been arrested. Police corrected it by arresting arresting him him. on the spot. Yeah. So what a knucklehead. He knew... He was wanted. They accidentally put yeah. the wrong man on the list. He came in to say, I hadn't been arrested. Well, you have now. Unless he didn't know there was a warrant for his How arrest. How did he not know? He was a drug dealer. I don't know. So anyway, you think he's a knucklehead. Stick around. We got another one on the way that's very similar. And uh, kids, this is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Short while ago, we told you about Alex Riviera. He was uh, wanted on drug charges. Police posted a thing saying that they had arrested him. He went to the police station to correct them and then was arrested. Right. (laughs) So moving on to our moment of duh, an 18-year-old girl who had escaped from an Australian correction center responded to police when her mugshot was posted on Facebook. She asked them to please use a better picture of her. She even provided a photo for them. So she said, hey, I don't like that picture. Can you use this picture? So they utilized GPS to go pick her up. I mean, that wasn't very smart of her, was it? <laughs> she no. escaped from a correctional center and then and let I'm the cops sure know I've where she was. I'm pretty sure i heard this story, but it's, the, it's ridiculous. <sighs> People are not smart Well, that's today. why they're behind bars in the first yeah. place. So, and I know that we probably have somebody listening at jail right now. I'm not saying everybody that's in jail is a knucklehead because there's some people that made a bad decision that they get to go to jail for a while because they made a bad decision. But they're good people that made a bad decision. Uh, but then there are people like this that are just not smart people. Right. They're just, yeah. <laughs> They're probably protecting you by keeping you in there for a while. <laughs> All right. We have your scoop of the day, and that is on the way. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now, your scoop of the day. Be sure to drink plenty of water. This can help you from dehydration which can cause confusion and memory problems. What was I talking about again? <laughs> I'm almost always dehydrated. I think I you are, and I that. think I am too. Look at this. I got a look at this giant mug. It's empty. Yeah. I should have that full of water, and I should be drinking it. I have it sitting here. It's been in front of me now for like four or five days. I don't know why I don't. Anyway, they say get plenty of rest as well, because being tired can also impair your memory. Did I mention that drinking uh, more water will help too? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I did. Yeah. You did, yeah. For most people, putting on deodorant is a necessary ritual on par with brushing teeth and washing hands. But for those who produce no armpit stench, it is totally unnecessary. Or is it? Despite that, more than three quarters of those still use deodorant at least once a week, according to a study. Uh, The findings published in the latest issue of the Journal of Investigative Dermatology shows just how much a person's daily life is dictated by what's considered normal. So they go, well, I I know I don't actually produce a smell, but I got to do it because that's normal. How do you know if you do or don't produce a smell? Oh, I think you know. Why are you pointing at me? Do I produce a smell? I think you know. I mean, (laughs) when 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 across the room. No, you can smell it on yourself. (laughs) Like if you get to that point, you're just like, oh yeah, whoa. Well, there's some people that maybe don't notice that. So Um, that's where you should help your friends. But I have kind of quit wearing deodorant. I don't. I really don't sweat. Is that what's going on in here? 
I don't. I hear I thought I, that was me this whole ever. time. <laughs> I just don't sweat and I don't. I don't need it. So I'm like, why do I keep doing this every day? If I know I'm going to be like outside in the heat and you know, going to be around other people besides me, <laughs> then I'll put it on. But otherwise, I just don't need to. Our poor daughter. Yeah, she, she gets, gets that from, from me. You. Sorry, she Taylor. Has to wear. I love you, baby. Hey, according to a survey by ORI and the George Washington University Graduate School of Political Management. Whew, Almost two in three voters believe political information on Facebook and other social media platforms has the same or higher quality than content from traditional news outlets. Do you agree or disagree, Heidi? Do you think that the information you find on social media is just as good as what you find from the quote-unquote regular media? Yeah. In fact, I think because you can... You can look at both sides of an issue. Research on any particular story and find out where the source is and where it came from. I think you're getting better information online that you can research than you are from from TV. I tell you, there are some really, really slanted articles that I've read and really slanted news stories that I've seen, especially mm-hmm. this this particular election. But at least that's what I'm saying. At least when you're on there, you can say, "Okay, where did this come from? What is the source of this?" And you can go and see. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. ForeverHillary.com says that Hillary's going to win with the landslide. What or a could, shocker. Or it could be Forever Trump because it's slanted both ways. Yeah, You're both I'm just sides saying. doing So, that. I mean, when you check, though, and you go back to it and see where, where it originated, that's, yeah. that's how you can kind of double check for yourself. Well, off the political bandwagon right now, a recent survey reveals women have no problem buying knockoffs. <laughs> three, quarters, I don't. three quarters of women questioned in the poll admitted they have knowingly purchased a counterfeit designer fashion item. Many said they have as many as five fake dresses, handbags, wallets, jewelry, or shoes. How about you, Heidi? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have no problem buying you have knockoffs. Any, do you have any fake uh, designer stuff right now? I, probably. <laughs> He's like, I don't really check. It was two know. bucks, so I'm assuming it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have a problem with it. And our final story for our scoop of the day. Does logging onto Facebook make you feel sad? It's like everybody else is having fun, except for you. Maybe you're just overestimating how happy your friends really are. Research from Stanford University suggests that we misgauge our friends' negative feelings when, and we feel worse about ourselves. So we think that they don't feel as bad as we think that they feel, and we think that they feel better than what they really feel. Alex Jordan explains some people tend to focus on the negative aspect of their own life, but they only think about the positive aspects of other people's lives. So like, oh, look at all these fun things they do. But what they don't realize is, yeah, they have some negatives going on, too. They just right. don't talk about it on Facebook. So there you go. Speaking of Facebook, if you want to read all kinds of fun stuff, we have a, a page that we put things on. And I, I'm the one in charge of that, not Heidi. So it's usually <laughs> usually pretty I used to be in charge of I it. I took her off because she was getting political. <laughs> Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show. we got a special guest joining us right now. For those of you who like to watch home improvement television, you definitely know Kelly Edwards. Kelly is uh, the host of a show my wife absolutely loves called Design on a Dime. That's on HGTV. Also a show called Tacky House on Style Network. Kelly, how are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? Fantastic as well. I love the programs that you do because there are a lot of times people take on a project and they they don't want to do it because it's too expensive. But you give people ideas on ways to do things that don't have to cost a fortune, but it can still look like a million bucks. Oh, for sure. That's what I'm known for. I'm known for my design on a dime and my DIY. So, yeah, so basically today I'm going to... I'm basically going to tell you how to redo your bathroom on a budget without spending a lot of money or a lot of time, and it is super easy to do. And the bathroom is a really important room. If you're going to maybe sell your home, when people come in to take a look, one of the things that can maybe uh, make or break a sale is uh, if they walk in and it's got the, you know, the avocado green 
uh, tub and all of the stuff in there, people are like, ooh, boy, this looks like a huge project that I don't want to tackle. So you should you should consider whether you're selling your home or keeping your home, updating that bathroom and making it something that you'd love and others would love. What are some of the things people can do to make it look fresh and new on a very slim budget? Okay, so the first place that I think you should start is your vanity. Because if you think about it, that's kind of the biggest furniture piece in your bathroom, of course. So just by changing out the vanity, it can completely transform the look. I actually am standing here. I know you can't see it, but I have the Home Depot collection. um, I'm sorry, the Home Depot Home Decorators collection here with me. And these vanities are absolutely amazing. One is called a Claxby, which has this very vintage, chic look, which is super popular this this fall. What's great about this is that the top is actually non-porous. So it's bacteria, mold, and mildew resistant, so you basically have a cleaner and healthier home. Now, on the flip side of that, I also have something called an Abbey, and the Abbey is a vanity that blends kind of this traditional, modern, and contemporary look, plus it has two drawers for storage, which is super important for people with kids. And what people don't realize is that both of these vanities cost under $300. Nice. Yeah, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to completely transform the space. So what are some of the big trends that you're seeing this season as people are taking on remodeling projects to freshen up their home and make them look new? Or even if they're building a new home, what are some of the new trends that people are doing right now? Changing out their faucets. I mean, I am seeing that all over the place. Really, it's if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, oil rubbed bronze actually is a huge trend right now. Um, I have a few things with me that are that, that kind of have that oil rubbed bronze look. One is a Delta bathroom faucet called a Porter. This is super popular right now. It blends this style with this functionality and ensures complete water efficiency, which is actually a trend right now as well. Um, it has this very classic refined uh, arc in the faucet. It meets all ADA requirements. Uh, It has a water sense certification. It really is a reliable and efficient choice when you're choosing a faucet. And then on the flip side of that, what's super popular right now is the Everly. Now, this faucet is brushed nickel. It has a spot shield technology, which means less spots, less cleaning, an antimicrobial finish. And Delta also has this thing called a worry-free drain catch, which catches all your jewelry, valuables, pills, things like that that may go down the drain. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped things down the drain. So these are things that I'm seeing that people are actually putting into their bathrooms, which are super popular. Again, visiting right now with Kelly Edwards. She's uh, the host of Design on a Dime. We're talking about how to make your bathroom look nice and fresh without spending a huge uh, bundle of money on that. Uh, what are some other ideas that maybe people that are not real handy and they don't know how to switch all that stuff out, uh, are there are there simple things that they can do to, to freshen up the look of that of that bathroom? Absolutely. You know, you can even just change out the knobs. You would not believe what a difference it makes when people just change out their knobs in their space. Sometimes they have kind of those old knobs that came with their vanity, and I'm like, just, just walk down the aisles, $3 for each knob completely transforms the look. That is super easy. Uh, they can also do a super easy flooring. There's something called a Traffic Master, which is just a vinyl peel and stick flooring. That's great because it's durable for a bathroom, and honestly, it looks like real wood. That's easy to do if you don't want to spend a lot of time and a lot of money, and you're not a great DIYer. Or there's actually something called Smart Tile, and it's just stick-on tiles onto your walls. Perfect for renters. I'm, like, obsessed with those, too. So, You know, when you're updating your bathroom, you can think, I'll just change out the hardware, maybe do a vinyl peel and stick floor, maybe do, you know, a peel and stick tile, that stuff. You don't need a chop saw, you don't need a tile saw, and it won't take you a lot of time. And a little bit of paint goes a long way, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh, yes. Everybody always says, I'm just going to repaint. And I'm like, that's, you know, I, I definitely am a big proponent of that. $25 can completely change your life and change the look. And right now, as far as trends go, grays, really popular, uh, light shades of blue, definitely shades of white. I mean, I basically now, I've done three homes in the past year, and we've basically done everything white. Everyone loves like that crisp, clean look of white. Very nice. And, And white is always in style, too. Oh my gosh, yes. And you know what? When it comes to your bathroom and comes to your home, 
Uh, some people get really bored by the very neutral colors, but the truth of the matter is, as a designer, I know that it's super important to make things look very classic because you want your clients to say in 15 years, I still love this. I remember Harvest Gold was really big when I was a kid, but there are bathtubs and there are toilets and there are sinks that are Harvest Gold still to this day that you're like, you know, maybe not so much. <laughs> Although I will tell you that, uh, you know, the brass is back. Everybody loves that brass, but it's more of a brush brass. So yeah. it's not kind of that shiny brass that you remember from, you know, the 1970s but uh, and 80s. But it's definitely back. And I still love it. But, again, it's, you know, things go in and out of style, but white just really stays classic. Kelly, where can we find all these wonderful ideas that you're talking about? Where can we find the stuff to help us make it happen? So if you're a total DIYer, that's amazing. You basically have my heart because I am a DIYer as well. But if you're a little bit intimidated by all uh, these DIY projects and you kind of don't want to do it yourself, you can certainly take advantage of the Home Depot installation services. They actually have someone that can come out and help you with that. You can either go to the store or you can go to homedepot.com, and that will walk you right through it. Kelly, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us today. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Again, Kelly Edwards, best known for the program My Wife Loves, and I actually, I have to admit, I love it too. It's called Design on a Dime. You can see that on the HGTV channel. Also, uh, the Style Network has a program called Tacky House that she's on as well. A lot of great ideas, and you can do things on a very slim budget with the ideas that she has. Again, her name is Kelly Edwards. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This is the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. When you join, you'll be giving them the set of numbers that you want them to play, and that's what they will play for you. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that's RadioLottoPool.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Heavier lemons produce more juice and tastier juice than light lemons. Well, that's kind of common sense, yeah. isn't it? I didn't know it was common they're sense. they're heavier, it's because there's more liquid in them. Oh, probably. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The word America comes from the European explorer, huh? What's his name? Americano. No, Amerigo <laughs> Vespucci. You don't remember that from history class? I really was rarely I don't know. There. He was a map maker, and he made the first map of America. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The members of the Nazi SS party had their blood type tattooed in their armpit. That would hurt. Hmm. Holy cow, that would hurt. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The first country to abolish capital punishment was Austria. That happened in 1787. And uh, hmm. fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The worldwide Spanish flu epidemic broke out in 1918. It killed more than 30 million people in, yet, in less than a year. Holy cow. Yikes. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. That, wasn't, that last one wasn't very That fun. wasn't a fun fact. No. That's why we got to end on an up note. Uh, All right. One of the listed ingredients in Fruitopia fruit juice is bug parts. It contains cochineal, which is a red dye made from pulverized bodies of insects. Ugh. I don't think I'm going to drink any of that. Thanks. Does it say bug parts on it the just label? It says cochineal. Cochineal. But it doesn't say bug parts behind it because nobody would buy it then. They came up with a fancy name for bug parts. What? Which <laughs> juice was this? Fruitopia fruit juice. I've never bought it, thankfully. Yeah. All right. Thanks and for listening I won't. to a fun fact or two on Wednesday. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Wednesday. Uh, some South Carolina high school students are getting a close-up look at medical school, including the cadavers. Lynn Hurd of the University of South Carolina Medical School says the tours are so popular they have to turn students away. The high schoolers have a chance to get an up-close look at the daily regimen of a medical student. But... The stop at the anatomy lab has proven to be a little too gross for a few. University officials say they've actually had some teenagers 
who have completely fainted and lost consciousness during the lab tour where they're seeing the cadavers. Hmm. So my question for you is this, Heidi. Yes. Would you, first of all, would you even have any interest in going on a tour of a medical school? Sure. You would? Sure. I, I'm shocked by that. I didn't think you'd have any. What would you like, what would you like to see at the... The, is there, the cadavers. Is, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. See, now that, that really surprises me. Huh. Because I, I don't think I would. Yeah, I'd want to see. I think I, I just think I'd rather not. I'd be like, eh, I'll skip that. <laughs> I don't, I don't even want the tour. I mean, I don't want any of the tour. Can I stay here and just get some extra credit for you know doing homework or something? I don't think I'd want to go. I just don't. I've never wanted to be a doctor. See, the reason I think you're, I think you're full of it here. Remember when our daughter poked her hand and she was bleeding? But that's my daughter. You almost fainted. That is my daughter. I had to pull it together and and stop the bleeding and. If it were somebody else, no, I'd be fine. I don't think you would. It's my daughter, though. Mm. Seeing your child and then you're, there's nothing you can do because they're hurt. I've seen that happen to you a couple of times. When she broke her arm, you were the yeah, same way. Yeah, it's my daughter again. Yeah. It was my daughter. So we'll see. I just don't know. I don't know if I believe you. I think she's acting all tough but on the I radio. I walked past all the other people and they had no issues. It's not like I was fainting, walking down the hallway. His arm is hanging out. It's pretty cool. Can I go get a picture with him? Think he'll do a selfie? <laughs> no. No, don't do that. All right. Anyway, this is happening in South Carolina, and it's at the University of South Carolina, and there's kids fainting during the tour. And Heidi says she would do it. but I, I would just, do it. I don't think so. All right. We're going to teach you how to lose weight by laughing. That's on the way. Let's talk business. If you're in business, you need a website. Come on, it's 2016. Do you really think the internet thing is not going to catch on? Many business owners that don't have a website think it's just too expensive. Well, now it's not. You can actually build a website set up for less than $30 a month. If you need help designing it or just laying something out, we're here to help you. Get a free trial right now at radiosavings.com. You can actually build the site and see it online for free during this trial. So why not check it out at radiosavings.com. All right, Heidi, I absolutely love this idea. Here's the headline. Lose weight by laughing. I love the idea. I do, too. A study by Vanderbilt University. Now, let's, let's pause right there. These guys, that's a credible place. Is it? Yes. Is it? Yeah, you've heard of Vanderbilt before, haven't you? I've heard of Vanderbilt. Yeah. I, I didn't know it was a university. I knew, I knew it was <laughs> a clothing line. What? Gloria Vanderbilt. That's, they make perfume just and clothing. The, you just stopped talking for a bit here. <laughs> what? You just study by a clothing line. <laughs> no. I had no clue there was a college. Okay. Yeah, it's in Nashville. A study okay. by Vanderbilt University in Nashville. <laughs> Not to be confused with the clothing line from somewhere else. <laughs> You didn't laugh at me, but it's a thing. Okay. They found that laughing can help you lose weight. So we're losing weight just telling this story. There you go. Volunteers were shown clips from comedy films, and researchers found that 10 to 15 minutes of unforced laughter burned off enough calories to offset a medium-sized square of chocolate. Well, if that's well, all. Well, good Lord. 10 to 15 minutes of laughing <laughs> for one little square what's, of chocolate? What's going to offset a medium-sized pizza? That's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> we were like an hour of laughing is what we're going to need. All right. Well, the good news is if you listen to this program, you can get rid of your uh, membership to the gym because, you know, this is just like yeah, a workout every as day. As long as the only thing you eat every day is a medium-sized square of chocolate, you're in good shape. We are all set. All right. All right. Keep, keep the membership. Just keep the membership. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. We're finally giving up, Heidi. All right. Fewer people are dieting and women are leading that decline. In 1992, 35% of women said they were dieting. Last year, it was only 23%. Helping that trend is the perception that skinny is not all that great anyway. In 1985, 55% of people thought uh, people who were... 55% of people thought people who were not overweight were more attractive. That number has dropped down to just one in four, so 25%. So it was like over half thought that people who were not overweight were more attractive. Now they're going, hey, you know what? Eh, Some curves are good. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry for ruining that story by not being able to read it very well. That's probably a good thing. That I can't read it There's a lot more of us with curves. Hey, I got some curves. We're the majority, I think. And here's the thing. I honestly, uh, for there are people who, to me, attractiveness has so much more to do than with just what you see on the outside. 
Agreed. Because I've seen people who are absolutely stunningly beautiful. And then you just talk to them for two seconds. And you're like, I and they, really don't like that And the person. thing, exactly. Because the, yeah. their their heart is not right. beautiful. Exactly. And you can have a beautiful heart and have all kinds of stuff going on on the outside and still be beautiful. Right. I mean, look at me. <laughs> My wife over here married me. I don't know what. Uh, must be because they have a good heart or something. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. John and Heidi. We got some good news coming your way here in just a little bit. But first, we got this story, and this could have this could have probably been my good news story because it was good news as well. I just didn't. You know, of the two, I thought the other one was just good or good news. That's okay. All. It was gooder. It was gooder. No, I, right. I know that's not a thing. So you don't need to send me an email. I'm just being silly. It's a Wednesday. I'm kind of squirrely. Uh, it says here, headline, Brazilian kids learn English with elderly Americans. That's a cool headline. All right. So here's a great idea. And it's a simple idea. Young Brazilians want to learn English. Elderly Americans living in retirement homes want people to talk to. Yeah. Why not connect them? An agency, uh, FCB Brazil, did exactly that with a thing called Speaking Exchange. It's a project for a language school company uh, that they were working with. The young Brazilians and older Americans connect through web chats, and they not only begin to share a language, they develop a relationship that enriches both sides culturally and emotionally. Well, that's nice. I like that a <clears throat> lot. I think it's really a neat thing. And it gives the, the elderly people who are in the retirement homes that don't have people to visit, gives them someone to visit with while they're teaching yeah, these youngsters a language. that's wonderful. I like that. Do you remember when Skype was a brand new thing? Yes. And, and a friend of mine was telling me, oh, you got to get on Skype. You can... Now, what people use Skype for most of the time now is to use it kind of replace a telephone. You know, they'll mm. do Skype calls. I don't like to be on Skype. Me I don't like to see my face. I just talked to a friend from England today on Skype, and I hate it. I, I just use the phone part of it. My friend from England always wants to Skype, and I'm like, I can't do to, that. And I, I'm I, sorry. I told, I told him, I said, can we just do it? I, he said, oh, you don't have your camera on. I said, I have my phone up to my ear. You want to see inside my ear, I'll turn the camera on. <laughs> I can't hear you when it's way out there anyway. Yeah, I just don't. I, I spend more time mm. looking at myself and the faces I'm making than I do paying attention to the For conversation. For me, I look at it, I'm like, oh, I got an extra, I got like seven chins yeah, now. I don't, I, last time I, I was on Skype, I only had six. I don't care for it. So for me, when Skype first came out, there was a thing. I don't even know if they still do it, but they had Skype casts. And I remember I posted a thing on there because I was like, oh, hey, I'll, I'll do one of those. That'd be kind of fun. And I had all these people that were listening. And there was like only one guy asking questions. And I was like, if anybody else has questions, let me know. And then you could actually send him a message. So I sent a message to one. I was like, hey, do you have any questions? And the guy was like, no, I'm just learning English. So imagine this. I taught a bunch of people English. (laughs) There are people in other countries that can't speak very goodly. (laughs) And I'm sorry for that. Oh, you do great most of the time. All right. Coming up, we've got some good news. That is on the way. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think this is good news. Long lines of Maryland residents and those in surrounding areas were expected Saturday at a BP gas station to receive free gas for their cars. Wow. That was part of a Maryland church uh, effort to have a ministry like Jesus. The Christian Post reported last week that the First Baptist Church of District Heights would be hosting a gas buy-down event. The goal was allow locals to fill their gas tanks free of charge for up to $20. The event was co-sponsored by the local BP gas station there in their community. The pastor and many members of the church were at the pumps to service as many vehicles as possible. 
So uh, I've got a link to this story at facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. I think that's really cool that's they really would do cool. that. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of being there for people in the community and, and uh, doing nice things and doing good things. And this is a way to do it, to, to reach some people. That's a great way to reach some people is by saying, hey, we'll give you $20 worth of gas. Just stop by, you know. Yeah. There's, it's not like they said, hey, you got to. Once you go to our service, when the right. service is done, you get a coupon. Then you go to the, you know, it wasn't any of that. It was just stop by. And I think that right there is a sign that this was a really good thing. There weren't a bunch of hoops he had to jump through. It was just stop by. Yeah. We'll do this. I think this. that's super. <clears throat> so anyway, that happened. Again, the First Baptist Church of, the, of District Heights in Maryland is where that happened. So cool story. I always like good news like that. Yeah, I know you do. I'm surprised I, you didn't cry. I didn't cry. I know, usually. That, no, that one wouldn't make me cry. <laughs> the ones that make me cry are where somebody does something really good for somebody like they don't even know. It was something really good for Yeah, but I mean, you know, this is like a whole group of people. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of a good example right now. I'll cry for you later. How's that sound? Okay. <laughs> Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday.